Top of the morning to you. We're back again. More painting on Saturday morning. Just hook up the power here. Make sure we're juiced up. And, well, the camera's juiced up. And I gotta make sure I'm juiced up. Happy, happy Saturday morning. We did shoot a video last night. It is already edited. It is already uploaded to YouTube. It is already ready to go. YouTube is just processing the high definition version. So uh, after this show uh, is over, I will post that. So you guys interested in a battle report, no spoilers. Um, but it does have some unique things we hadn't done together. We've done all the stuff to it, but uh, it should be interesting. It's a series of four battles, and almost all of them were really interesting and had some unique things happen. So, uh, to be continued, I would normally have posted this uh, before. As soon as a video is available, I want to go ahead and post it. It doesn't do me any good. It burns a hole in my pocket, so to speak, uh, holding on to it. We went through the trouble of playing it and editing it. We would definitely want to um, have you guys check that out. As soon as it's possible. Okay, so where do we leave off last time? Um, well, we're working on uh, Mr. Dracula himself. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint all his accoutrements and see if we can get him a little bit less Santa Claus looking. Because that's what it looks like right now, a little bit. Um, I am not opposed to changing the color of his jacket um, to maybe a darker color. Uh, I, de I definitely want to give him some color. I've seen some artwork where he is wearing red, so I didn't want a really bright one. I wanted his hat a little brighter than the other colors, but um, we'll see. Let's keep going and not get discouraged, and uh, let's add the other items on there and see where we get to moving forward. We've got lots of little things to add to him to add color, and we'll see where that goes. All right. Uh, good morning, Pierre Menal. Bonjour. Excellent. We got some French people coming now. Good. All right. Um, all right. So let's, oh, how could I forget? I was going to do an unboxing video on this. Um, a couple things, update. Um, I still haven't gotten my Essex order in the mail, so it's about three days late. Um, normal. I don't know if the, the holiday on President's Day on Monday. Uh, freaking Santa, yeah. yeah. We're going to un-Santa him, don't worry. Uh, if not, we'll just paint a different guy. <laughs> this guy's going to look like Dracula or else. Uh, <laughs> we'll put him on one of the sticks. Um but my Essex order is late by about three days. I don't know if that has to do with the President's Day holiday. Every time I've placed an order, I'm like, there always seems to be some kind of a post office holiday that screws the whole thing up. And then I started looking at it. At least here in the United States, I think every month has a federal holiday where the... Where the um, um, where the mail doesn't run, except August. Um, January has Martin Luther King. February has President's Day. Uh, March has, there may be one other month that doesn't have it. I don't know if March has one. Uh, anyhow, it's there's always something, so there's always one in the way. But, you know, luckily it's not critical. It's not like we have to um, put some pats around. Yeah, yeah, it looks, you know, there's always something. Luckily it's, not that big of a deal, you know, even if they came in, it wouldn't do anything else. So we're going to, we're going to uh, do this. If we're not happy how this turns out, we're going to do his assistance and then see if I can get some, I'm not worried about it. This is my first rodeo. He will, he's, this is not my first rodeo. We, we know how to, to deal with this. Oh, and the impaled, the impaled that we painted the other day or on corks. So that'll be the next thing after we do this command stand. And with a little bit of luck, 
with a little bit of luck and some perseverance, I'll get this guy done this weekend and the camp. It's kind of a tall order, and then we can play with him on Monday. But I don't think it's going to happen because I'm not willing to rush things. I think the command stand could get done this weekend, but there's no... Um, it's unlikely that... Um, that I'll get the camp done because the camp's going to take a little bit of time. I'm not just going to dry brush and wash and, and you're done with the skeletons. They, they need to look as good as the rest of the army or I wasted my time. At least that's how, how I look at it. So, all right, let's do a couple of things. Okay. First of all, let's get, let's finish up the sword. And the other thing I wanted to do about the unboxing is I did get some brushes in. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to do an unboxing video because that's going to take, um, that's going to take time into, um, that I could be using to paint and get these guys done. So I'm going to do a quick unboxing video or talk about what I got and what I think about them. And I had been on the search for some replacement brushes, not that I'd necessarily have a lack of them at this moment. Um, but I wanted to get some brushes that didn't come from, you know, a place that was evil. Let me rephrase that. I didn't want to get them from a place whose government is evil. There we go. There's decent people there, I'm sure. Um, so I didn't want any Chinese brushes. I'm, I'm tired of them. And, you know, so I went on Amazon. These three particular brushes from two different companies uh, all are supposedly made in the United States. Now, I'm not opposed to brushes being made in Italy or France even. Uh, somewhere that, you know, there's, that people aren't treated like slaves. Um, so I was looking around and it's really hard to find that kind of stuff. So, you know, at a, at a reasonable price. So there's two companies I found. One of them is called AIT. And, uh, the other one is called ZEM, Z-E-M. Okay. And these, ZEM in particular, it says our main production takes place in USA, Japan, India, and Germany. No problem with any of those places. And then these are assembled in the United States, is what it says, with quality globally sourced materials. If you go on the AIT website, it lists the countries that it comes from, and China is not one of them. So they are more expensive than Chinese brushes. And um, let me see, let me show you what I got here. So Zem is the first one. There's only one pack of the Zem, so let's take a look at that one first. Okay, and we may use some of them today. We will see. Um, these are student golden synthetics. So I know people rave about brushes that are sable, and they're very hard to get here. I mean, there's no, I can't get Windsor and Newton ones. I've talked about it before. I'm probably going to pick one up at a convention, but I'm not going to order a brush sight unseen. Yeah, here it says USA, India. I got no problem with things coming from India. So... Let's take a look at what this is. And this is a pack of four. And they're considered golden synthetic rounds. And for those of you guys that are obsessed with brush sizes, I'm not one of them because the size of the look of the brush. See, this is a two. And I don't know if you can make out. Let me put my glasses on so I can see what I'm showing you guys. Because the computer's a little too far away. Uh, the glare is a killer. This is not what I would call a big brush. This should work just fine for... Uh, it's inside of a plastic sleeve, which has the rubber tip on it. So there's a, a ton of glare on this thing. I'll show you this. This looks like a fine brush is what I'm getting at. Okay, and um, I forget what the pricing on these things are. Um, I'm going to use them before I recommend them, <laughs> because uh, but they're relatively inexpensive. I want to say this was like eight dollars or something like that for four brushes, so it's not crazy. It comes with one of those two really small ones. We're actually probably smaller than any of the ones that I actually have. Yeah, the glare is a killer. I don't really want to unbox all these until I use them. So it comes with four brushes, a zero, a two, 
a 10 aught, which is really tiny, and a 3 aught. A 10 aught, it's funny because these other bulk brushes I've gotten in the past from China, you know, before I installed the boycott on them, um, are none of them are the size of this. This is a this is a very I'll take this out so you can see. This is a very small brush. There's not very many bristles on here. So I have a feeling that if this is in fact a ten knot brush, many of the other brushes I've been using that have been called ten knot brushes, really in fact are not. They're just lip service. Or print print service because they're just printed on there. Yeah, that's a tiny brush. Let's see if I can put some something black up against it. There we go. So we'll see. This is going to be like for something really small on heraldry, and I'm going to actually keep the little plastic things on these guys. Let's just take them all off. We're going to keep these. That's the thing about buying brushes sight unseen. You don't know what you're going to get. And in the past, brushes varied complete a lot. Jeez. Thought I had it by here and it didn't. Okay, here's another one. This is a three out. This one actually has some fibers here on the end. I'm going to have to trim. So. You know, you're not getting a perfect brush. That's the problem. But we're going to keep these. Okay, and this is the last one. This is ZEM. I'm probably going to keep these off to the side and not mix them in with the uh, with all the other brushes. I'm not opposed to buying a Windsor Newton that people rave about but I don't want to order one without being sight unseen because you don't know how big your brushes are going to be these I'm very happy with the size I would have picked these up at a store no problem um, and these are considered golden aesthetics AS4 student okay and anyhow this is ZEM, and they're not made somewhere bad, unless you consider the United States and India bad. I don't, so. Hey, you can do whatever you want with your money. That's how it works. That's ZEM. The other one's a similar one is this company, a similar pack is this company called AIT. These came in a three pack, and these are all claimed to be 3O mini liners. Now, I prefer, generally speaking, like I said, all brushes are differently. I prefer liners to rounds. Um, you get better control with the liners, you get bigger, uh, longer. Um, Filaments, what's the word, the, the actual brush itself, and more control. I prefer them. And these look great. These look great. These are all the same size. This is about the size I'd be happy with everything else. They're imperfect. This one looks like a perfect brush right here. This one has one little filament that's sticking out farther than the other ones. We'll have to trim that out, you know. They're not going to do as good a quality control as I would. And uh, we need to be make sure we don't botch this up going in. Because you have one of those invisible fibers that sticks out farther. You can't even see it until it's too late. So these come in, this was three. And again, this was probably like $7 for three of them. I don't go through them that fast. And I really kind of want to reserve these for some of the detail stuff. How many brushes do I use on an army? I don't know. I don't think that I go through, I can probably use a brush easily for three or four months, probably. I, I you know, I, I'm not super uncareful with them. I have a lot of them that are in bad shape, but I've had them for 10 years, so 
I don't go through them so much. And then here's another pack, also from IAT, and I think I'm going to return these. Um, and the reason I'm going to return these is because these are actually a mixture of uh, Sable. Let's see, let me find out exactly what the... It's a Kalinsky blend. And first of all, they're rather expensive. They're $16 for four of them. I just bought a couple different ones just to kind of see what it is. And these are also by IAT. And a couple things about these. They... Now, I haven't used natural... Um, I haven't used natural... Um, tipped brushes. Tipped? You know what I'm saying. The actual material in probably 30 years and now nah, maybe we'll keep them I've already got them they just they look like they're not laying as well together all right we're gonna keep them I looked at them yesterday I'm like I don't know if I'm gonna keep these guys we'll just keep all of them this came with four um, I may find out that I like these better. They're weird because they're thicker here. And I've never had a brush that's actually has, that's thicker here where you grab it. So that might take some get used, getting used to. Anyhow, there you have it. That saved me from doing an unboxing video. Sorry to torture some of you that have no interest in this. But that's what we got. We spent about $30 for all three of those. So we may pull one of them out and use them for the heraldry on one of these two shield bearers. But until then, I'm not gonna use them for super detailed stuff. I've got tons of other brushes. I uh, know not all these are in great condition and I have a few. Let's see, can I get away with doing this even though it's gonna be upside down? Let's see if I can get away with doing this, even if it's going to be upside down. Watch this. So I've got several other brushes here. So I've got probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 brushes I could count on um, of different things. I just, I just felt the urge to, yeah, and I got the other ones that I work on here. So I would have just continued buying the cheap brushes if Red China wasn't such bastards. I would have just been perfectly happy continuing to buy their brushes, but um, I'm just not going to do it. Um, I'm not going to look down on somebody that can or maybe doesn't want to spend the extra money, but I'm able to, so I will. So I look at everything that I buy now, and I see where it comes from, and there's places I don't want to support. And I'm not one of those that has to be made in the United States. It needs to be made somewhere that's... Our are, is friendly to us, which is basically the whole damn world except three or four places. So, um, anyways, to be continued. But Pierre, let's get some of those brushes made in France. We'll buy those up too. This um, this paint palette's made in France, so good for them. Okay, let's um. I came really close to a couple of years ago just snapping all these brushes in half and not buying any more. But I had already bought them. So I figured, well, let's not do that yet. They haven't pissed me off that much yet. So let's put it this way. If they jump on Taiwan, I'm snapping all my Chinese brushes. How about that? I'll make that deal with you. I'll throw away all my Chinese brushes if they jump on Taiwan. <laughs> How's that for sanctions? <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, they could be making this stuff in Taiwan, too, you know. <laughs> How are we doing this morning? Just got home from the bar. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, depends where it is. I'm doing, I'm doing almost as good as you are. <laughs> All right, we're going to paint the rest of the... Uh, You know, I like the bar. I just don't like the people that go to bars. No offense. I'm just talking about people that are there every night. I have nothing against alcohol, but it's definitely not an addiction for me. Um, I just assume other people don't have substance abuse issues, and I guess that's not the issue. I'm not saying that you're one of them. I'm just 
I like the bar, I just don't like the people that you find at them frequently. I'm a very respectful person when it comes to um, people's space. And I don't mean because of COVID. I just mean just in general. Uh, I don't want to bump into people while people are... And sometimes you get into a bar situation where there's no space to move around in. And I'm not claustrophobic. I'm not anti-people. It's just, you know, people shouldn't be bumping. When you're, you know, when you're sitting in a corner all the way up against it and you have your drink up against you and, and you're still in people's way... I don't need to be there. That's just too many folks. You know, it's too inconvenient. Um, all right, let's uh, let's get some of this metal and put it on there. So, as I mentioned earlier, some of you guys probably weren't on here yet. We did film a video last night. Um, it has a DBA video, of course. Uh, it had a, it has a lot of things that we've done before, but not all of them together. It's the only spoiler I'm going to do with it, um, and um, and it worked pretty well. But um, and I stayed up. I got home relatively late, and I stayed up another hour making sure that it got uploaded to YouTube so that it could process while I was asleep, and I could post it when I woke up this morning. And it's still processing the HD version. So be on the lookout for that. As soon as we're done filming, we're gonna it should be done, and then we'll post it as well. So you can have some viewing over the weekend if that's the thing that you do. If you're interested in watching some DBA battles, it's just Mitch and I, and uh, we got a series of four battles, and you can check that out. Hopefully, later this morning, Eastern Standard Time. All right, this is just the, the bottom color of the sword. We're going to shine that up significantly more. Okay. And we have a bow. We have a bow case. He definitely needs a bow case. It's a little bit above and beyond. Man, let me take a sip here and check who showed up. Pierre, for my part, I'm painting, watching you paint. And I need a drink. Thank you, Matthew. If I had a drink... Actually, I've done... I did a video, I'm going to say a year ago, that was probably like a nine-hour, nine-and-a-half-hour painting video. I know that's probably not for somebody to watch, but it was so long, I think I had a beer with you guys. So, uh, the problem is, is it makes me sleepy, you know, and... Um, And it slows me down where the caffeine picks me up. So, but I'm not one of those people that gets angry. I'm like I tell people at work, you'd like me a lot more if I could drink at work. I'm a very pleasant um, imbiber. All right, we have some arrows here. Let's get some arrowish color. Uh, for that, we will call on the services of. Green ochre. Need a drink. Yeah, I'm drinking all... I drink a lot. I drink a lot of fluids when... Just in general. Paint while watching you paint. Yeah, I do that. I don't do it anymore because I just make my own content, but... I get bored painting. So just having some kind of interaction with you guys, even though it's minimal... That helps me get through it, for sure. All right, we're going to... I don't really want to use brown. I'll use black for it. I want a little bit more contrast.
and said, these guys will get done when they get done. They'll be done properly. I'm not going to rush and throw them together. And I really don't want to play them without the camp. The camp is just such a, I think, integral part of, the, of their psyche. So I don't think I've ever thought about an army that way. You know, that the camp is so important because I have several armies that don't even have a camp and a dedicated camp and have no really no interest in building a dedicated camp for them. But these guys with the impaled figures is quite the contrary. So we will do a proper unboxing video when the Essex figures come in, but I figured the brush is probably wasn't really worth it, especially because I couldn't add a what I think of these brushes after using them for a little while part. So um, I know that's what that would just generate. Well, how brush? How are these brushes? I don't know. I just unboxed them. <laughs> so your guess is as good as mine. We'll keep the packaging and I've got the links. So if we use them after a while and we think that they're we. Yes, me, myself, and I. Uh, if we think that uh, they're, they're worth your time, uh, we'll recommend them. If they suck, I'll tell you they suck, and why not? I don't think they'll be, I mean, they're brushes, you know? Who cares? Well, just stop by. Now I need to go to bed. I need to be up in three and a half hours. Good night, or I guess good morning. Okay. Don't forget to hydrate, Matthew, so you don't have a... Massive headache. At least that's what happens to me. I don't even have to drink very much to get a headache. Just a dehydration thing. All right. The old dehydration thing. For those of you in the state of Florida, or that will be traveling to the state of Florida, I listed the game games that we're going to be running at our convention in April. Uh, Thursday, I think is what it was. And I'm not make it, going to make a big deal out of it. I'm not going to do a lot of announcements. Last time I did that, it was the year of the pandemic and everything went sideways and none of it happened. So I'm many things, but I don't want to be a wolf crier, tell you that things are one way and they're a different way. So um, if I make plans for something and plans change, you better believe I'm pissed about it. So um, we don't want to do that. We'd rather do other things. We'd rather be a different type of person. But I don't think anybody could have predicted that. Those changes of that sort. Okay, so the arrowheads are done. I think we need to do the bow case now. Uh, or maybe the sheath. The sword sheath. Gosh. I've got to do. The red has to stay on his hat. It has to. That's an integral part. The jacket doesn't have to be red. And it's looking like I'm probably not going to do it in red. And I and I did it. I even did a darker red just to change that. I need to think about what color it's going to be before I do the bow case. And he ends up looking like a Christmas tree. I was initially thinking green, but I think that might be too, um, one color too far. Let's do it. Let's do a dark blue for the bow case. Let's do a dark blue for the bow case. Not that I have anything against green. This is the kind of stuff you're not going to see, uh, 
those other people do. You know, all the decisions and stuff that they make. I just, I think it's not worth editing all that stuff out. It just creates more work for myself. And really, the purpose of this video is, I don't know, share some kind of knowledge that I've acquired. I mean, I'm not the world's expert on anything, but I think there's quite a few things I do fairly well. And mainly, to keep myself on task. Nope, that's not bright enough. That's too dull. Let's go to Games Workshop. Let's see if they've got anything for us today. Let me flip this up here and rotate up in the air in the sky cam. Now I can get back here. Let's see what colors we have. Nauseating blue. Not, a, not doing a good job of selling that color with that name. I actually have two nauseating blues. Well, that's just crazy. What in the hell do I need two nauseating blues for? There's a purple back here. I don't really want to use purple with him. If I can avoid it. He isn't a king. He is a prince. I want to avoid the purple. You know, I don't want to use these things where every general has purple or every horse is white. That's the commander's horse. You know, uh, it just gets old doing that kind of stuff. Let me look up. Okay, I put that color on the bottom on purpose so I wouldn't use it. Oh, the blue I was looking for was up here. Yeah, intense blue. Let's do intense blue. I think these have a little bit too much purple in them for, for my current liking. That Games Workshop pot is old. It is. And so is the other one. This one's actually separated a little bit. Yeah, this one's actually kind of dry. I don't know why I have two of this color. It's not a, you know, I don't paint fantasy stuff. The one that was really good to me, but it's died and I just haven't had the heart to throw it away is Vermin for... I use this one for rifles a lot. Like rifle butts when I was painting my, like my uh, German rifles. It works nice, nicely. I've got a handful of them. I even got one that's not even open yet. I have a shadow gray that's not open. I'm sure they'll last another 40 years. Um, I think that's the same formula as the coat the arms, or I should say the coat the arms is the same formula as them. If, if so, that is my favorite formula because those apply the nicest of any of the paints that I have. All right, so where did this blue that I just put away is? I got to keep myself on a short leash. I start doing things I don't want to do. Let's get this blue out here. I get distracted a little bit talking about stuff while I do it. But it also keeps me on task more. So I think the benefits outweigh the, the unbenefits. The things I say that I would never type. I don't consider myself a somebody that's bad with grammar. But I know that sometimes I get lazy when I talk about things and say things and not proper English, so. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think this is correct. All right, so we're gonna paint this entire bow case in this dark blue color. Yeah, there's all kinds of things that I say that I would never type up. One of my favorite things to say is weirdisms. You know, things that are odd weirdisms. Yeah, you don't, I wouldn't type that in an, even an email. Well, maybe an email to, you know, gamer people. But yeah, that's not a real word. But I create my own word, word, words. Hell, if Bush could have done it, why can't I do it? I'm sure I could be more creative than him.
do some kind of design on there. This guy may not have any blue on him, but his standard bearer is going to. There's two shields, and they're both these particular figures. They're old, oh, they're uh, minifigs figures. Uh, I don't know if it's in focus, and I really don't want to put my glasses on, but that's, that's what they look like. Um, they each have a shield. One of them's going to have the flag. The other one is just going to have a regular lance, and uh, they both have a shield on them. One of them will have one coat of arms. Another one will have a different one. And one of them does have a significant amount of blue on that coat of arms. So I've already identified what I'm going to do. So having a little bit of blue here does help tie in all that together. Now, let's see how we're looking over here in the white department. And let's, let's add a little bit more intensity to this. And then we'll start straying off. So one of those things about Essex figures is they actually make pretty decent figures, but a lot of the details they leave for you to add to them. So for instance, these bow cases are completely barren. Okay, I need to adjust this because you guys aren't seeing. This bow case is completely barren of any detail whatsoever. It's completely smooth. So you can take that as a, it's a blank slate and I can do whatever I want. Or what I would imagine most people do is they just paint it a solid color and sometimes that works. And sometimes, well, if it works for you, it works for you. But for me, sometimes that doesn't work because a lot of these cultures that were bow heavy cultures, such as the Scythians in particular, um, they had very ornate, they had very ornamented um, sleeves and clothing and not necessarily with precious metals but with colors and stripes and designs uh, bow cases people were particularly fond of uh, decorating with um, different designs and things like that so it is a blank slate but it's also very small. So sometimes you have to play, you know, you have to play this game of, let me add de detail, but it's just subtle and it's almost impressionistic. Because there's not a whole lot of information on it. And even if there was, it's too small. to really um, be able to be noticed. We kind of made an interesting design here, not by, see the end of this brush is already misbehaving, but that, ha you know, that happens. It'd be interesting to see if those sables behave any differently, but I have a feeling that they won't, but it doesn't happen that often. It's just after a while of use. So I put these designs on here and interesting enough, one of the designs that ended up happening looks kind of like an upside down cross. And I think I'm going to leave it not because this guy's satanic, but I think he kind of used what I've read about him. He kind of used religion to his own benefit. Not that that's unique in any way, but you know, he was, uh, he's right there in the middle of the Ottomans. So he, he, at one point in his life, I think he played nice with them. And then, you know, they decided to backstab him. He's big on pay, paying people back. But he was Orthodox right there in the split between the Orthodox, the, um, uh, the Muslims and, um, the Catholics, those are, the, the, Hungarians to the north were Catholic. And at least the book I read, he converted, to, he supposedly converted to Catholicism towards the end of his life, but 
you know, who knows if he really did and just used it for manipulative poses. So, you know, and with the whole vampire thing, I don't know, upside down cross, that might actually work a little bit. So it's not meant to be anything. It just kind of turned out to be. that and I actually have to fix a little bit of a mistake that I yes I make mistakes but I fix them it's not even that big of a deal let's see if I let me put my glasses on see if I can get you a, a closer view of this Probably not. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with the focus thing. Hey, I'm a painter, not a videographer. Why won't this focus? Let me try something. Let's go to the camera controls. Oh, I need to move this so I can see. Yeah. This camera option. There we go. That's a little better. We'll take pictures. It'll look better on pictures. This camera. I don't like this camera app as much as the old one. But it doesn't uh, act out. I haven't gotten one drop. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to brag about it. I'm just stating the fact. I haven't had a... I haven't had a dropped um, um, a drop feed since I've been using it for a couple weeks now, so it's better in that respect. So we'll have pictures of it later. Um, okay, so we have a bow to paint. I'm going to go ahead and use this this bow color over here. We'll use brown for it as the darkener. Blue looks good. So far, so far, I'm not dead set on anything being a certain color, except this hat. Every one of the hats always has the top part of it red, um, a kind of a dark red. So I'm kind of inflexible on that. Um, everything else can be subject to you know, you need to kind of uh, be flexible because sometimes things don't turn out how you want them to. It's not like we're pre-planning every single thing about this guy before we start painting him. We're just kind of jumping in and paint your way out. I've spent a lot of time in the past trying to pre-plan every single thing about the army. As a matter of fact, the, the first army I did, my feudal Spanish, I would pick out what figures were going to be on the stand and what poses and how I was going to paint them and then assembled them and painted them like pre-planned. It's just, I wasted so much time doing that. It's not that it didn't turn out well. It, Army looks great, but um, that's a lot of hemming and hawing. And hemming and hawing consumes a lot of time. And we need to get things done, not not get things done. So I'm trying to avoid that method of doing things. Sometimes you just have to just jump in, paint your way out. But, you know, be conscious that you may have to repaint something because it sounded like a good idea, but in practice, it didn't turn out how you thought you were. Not really didn't turn out. The colors next to each other, when you put them next to each other, it doesn't look right. Um... And that's only happened a couple times to me. And I paint really thin. So, you know, I can cover the thing again. And it's not taking any of the detail away. All right.
Now we'll do the boat case. Uh, the, um, I'm sorry, the um, sheath. The sword sheath. But I think before we get in there, we need to do the saddle. We're going to use a brown that's red-ish, kind of, for that. This, I believe this is cavalry brown. Yeah. Let's do that. Haven't been doing much painting this week, obviously. You haven't seen me on here. All the usual people are back. And then, you know, I've been glued to the internet a little bit, watching the developments that have happened in the last couple days that I haven't been very keen on. Been in an odd mood. I don't even know what to call it. So... Disappointment probably is what I would call it. So, but then I don't want to watch a lot of, uh, of, of footage because, you know, the last 15 years, if anything, I don't want this to turn into a current events thing, but, you know, I kind of talk vaguely about what I'm talking about. The last 15 years, anything that gets posted on the internet is suspect that you're really seeing the correct video. I mean, and it's something as simple as like the History Channel. The History Channel, when we used to have the History Channel, I don't know, 15 years ago, whatever, they would show, you know, it'd be a, a show about the Battle of the Bulge. And they have footage of, if you're a World War II nut, or you've seen a lot of World War II films, you've seen that picture of that Panzer II that's like an invasion of France, or maybe it's Barbarossa, going into like a stream and then coming back up. It's all the time, you know, but they show a Panzer II that's obviously 1940, 1941 in footage for a 1944 thing. And it's just kind of like everything that's in the news these days. It's suspect to, you know, that's not a picture of that taking at the right time. And, you know, um, there's a saying this one guy I heard probably around 1989 and really stuck with me. And it's a saying that this guy told me, this guy that I knew, um, that says, I like you for who you are, not for the stories that you tell. And it's really stuck with me. And that's kind of how I feel about the internet. Don't fill me full of crap. Tell me what it really is. And if you're giving me, I don't want to use the term fake news, but if you're giving me false reporting, um, I don't want to hear it. And... Everything is kind of suspect now that I see on the news, whether that's really if we're getting the whole picture. I mean, obviously, you're not getting the whole picture anyways, but I'm just saying, are you purposefully getting a and I'm not a conspiracy person, but are you purposefully getting the correct information or is it being spun to make you think a certain way? And I just think that that didn't used to be the case when I grew up, you know, they just. Now it's just anybody can be a quote unquote journalist and it has an agenda to spin. And so I, I kind of watch things with a, you know, take things with a grain of salt. But um, I've been pretty um, disappointed um, the events of this last week and, and mainly disappointed because there's not really a, uh, there's not really one good solution to what to do <clears throat> or you know if it goes any further um, there's even less good solutions so we'll just get back to we'll get back to gaming and I, I don't, I'm not per somebody who really watches the news so I really haven't watched the news in the last probably 20 years um, and it's the news kind of have to find me but um Yeah. So anyhow.
been a, a bit somber, let's put it that way. So we'll get back to painting and uh, see this is already turning into a mistake because now I'm really close to that dark red. So here's what we're going to do. Let's add some white and start deviating that from that direction. You like it, huh? Well, we're not done yet, so don't judge me just yet. Uh, if you like it already, then you're easy to please, dude. <laughs> Which means uh, you'll be happy with the results, I hope. Let's start deviating. Let's start being a deviant. I know this looks a little pink. That's okay. One of the cultures, and I forget which one it was. Uh, it's it's one of the Arabic cultures, I think, or it may even be my Rajputs. But I did some research a while back, and. Um, and it was saying that pink was like a manly color at whatever time this was. And it was medieval or something like that. It wasn't Europe. It was somewhere. I want to say it was India, the Near East kind of thing. And I thought that was pretty interesting. I think pink looks good on figures, you know, not all over the place, but like, you know, an article here, an article there. I wouldn't necessarily, I'm not jumping it. I'm not jumping out and buying pink clothes. I could handle a pink shirt. I'm not wearing pink pants. Okay. <laughs> the pink pants are. <laughs> um, okay. Sheaf. This is what we're going to go green. I know this sounds crazy, but stick with me here. No, this is the one we're going to do. Black green, which honestly is not a whole lot of black in it. It's, it should be like this color right here. That's a beautiful green. You can actually do a lot with it. It's a good starting point color. Oh. Don't bump that with your head. going to deviate. Oh, we got some on the horse. Can we take care of that now? We could just paint over it. Oh, it like disappeared. Yeah, we'll leave it alone. We'll touch that back up. We'll touch that back up right now, actually. This is the We Make Happy Accidents channel. Although I think Bob Ross just left the accident. I don't leave the accident. I just fix it. I think this was the horse that was a little bit of brown in it. For the highlight. It just looks wet right now. We're probably going to give the horse a highlight anyways to pop some of those muscles when we're all done. So no big deal. 
Okay, that's what I get for not having it set on here properly. All right, back to painting the bow case, the, um, the sword case. If anybody looks fancy in this army, it's this guy. Well, the commander for the Moldavians will look fancy too, but the Valachian guys, this guy gets first pick of the fanciness. Okay, that's quite enough right there. Off the screen, sorry. Don't know if it's at the focus distance where you guys can see. We'll, we'll take good pictures. We'll call the wife in and she'll take good pictures. And then we have the bottom of this bow case, uh, the, the part where the arrows go in. Let's do that in like a leather like uh, we got to do the uh, the quivers we got to do the quivers actually I need to go get, I need to get a drink we're almost done with this coffee so I'll be right back and we'll get some tea here and I tried to keep you guys waiting very long and come on do what you're supposed to do we'll be right back Okay, here we go again.
we need something that's kind of bright and leatherish. That's flat earth. Where's a leather brown color? It's, which is almost the same, but it's damn near the same thing. Not much reason I can't use it. That flat earth instead. I am, I am going to go ahead and just do that instead of looking for it. I got so many browns that are so, oh so similar. We're going to brighten this up quite a bit. Welcome, 10 viewers. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday for those of us that are blessed to be able to be here doing this. Like I mentioned earlier, there is a video that should be up later today. It's actually already up. It's just processing in HD. It's in YouTube has it now. I suspect that they're running slow with all the other processing that they're doing right now for all the other stuff that's on YouTube. And I imagine that there's quite a bit of it right now for obvious reasons. So... And with all the live feeds and so forth, it's kind of run away here, here. So it may take a little longer than, but it's out of my hands. So the good news is, I guess the good news is that you won't be bothered with trying to decide whether to watch my new video or the live feed. There's only the live feed right now. And then we'll do the other video. Um, We'll post the links to it and all that when we're off here. It should be done unless, you know, it's processing too much combat footage or whatever it is at the time. up Yeah, I actually got up, 
check the status of my video. Did not check the news on purpose so I wouldn't get sidetracked. And uh, just came on. So. You don't want to be checking the news every 5, 15 minutes or whatever. I get this one guy that I know that this guy's got, he's got some kind of condition because he panics over everything. And he's been panicking, well, he's been panicking his whole life, I think. But, you know, ever since the COVID thing, he's basically living in an underground bunker. And I'm like, boy, I'd hate to be you. And sure enough, just when that starts lightening up, now this comes in and he's worried about something else. I think he put on there, all my, he, what did he post the other day? All of my... Uh, nightmares from the 1980s are coming true. I'm like, I didn't have any nightmares in the 1980s. Well, not that we're related to that. But, yeah, I'm not like that. I'm not scared. I am not angry. I'm just really disappointed. I thought that we would be past that point. Considering religion is not involved, you don't have any crazy religious nuts involved. I think we would have been past that point. But I'm just disappointed. That's all. So you guys stay safe out there. Take care of your families. And just got to remember how blessed we are. And forget about that. I'm being religious. I think you can say, uh, hey, you're, you're blessed and not be religious. You know, just be thankful. Okay. We may put an extra layer of shine on that to give him an extra shiny sword for this guy. If anybody's got a shiny sword, it's this dude right here. Um, we do have some of the standard metal color here. We're gonna put that on the little details here of the, of the horse. Oh, and then there's a tuft of, there's a tuft down there hanging off the, the horse. I don't know what we're going to do that. Well, we're going to punt on that. All right, let's do his, let's do his mustache because it's not completely done. And we know this guy's going to have a black mustache. There's no doubt about that. That is a constant. Not going to be some blonde Dracula running around imposter. Mustache of unusual size. We got rains. Rains are definitely going to be a lighter color to pop them. Oh, we've got, of course, the um, the fletching. 
No doubt about that. I'm quite comfortable making all my fletching white. And then we'll take a, so let, take a look at some of these other colors and see how they all work in the big picture. And if we can't decide, we'll go on to another figure. Come back to him. Paint the other two guys and come back to this guy. Which is what I normally do anyways. I normally paint all the other attendants first. And then paint the main dude. The problem is, is there's some colors that I, I definitely wanted to do with him. Like he definitely wanted a red hat. There's some colorations that I was going to have with this guy that were, were constants. I wanted a dark color horse. I, had, I wanted the top of his hat being red. I wanted um, red um, straps, etc. on the horse to offset the dark colored horse. And just about every painting that I've seen of him. Whether or not it's historically accurate or not, doesn't matter. So because there were all these consonants that I was not going to be budged by, I figured, well, let's just go ahead and do him first. And let him set the pace of the rest of the army. But I lose the feed or just I haven't had any comments in a long time. Let me make sure. Let me go to this other page. No, nope, you guys are just busy doing your thing, looks like. No worries, you don't have to interact with me if you don't want to. I just want to make sure everything was okay. Um, 57 degrees, so it's actually uh, cool. And the mornings, it's gotten up into the 80s, high 80s, actually. It's pretty hot yesterday. But as long as the nights are cool, I'm not going to complain about it too much. I'm not going to complain about it too much. Now let's take a look at this guy. There is a t there is kind of an undershirt type thing that pokes a little bit there and it's a little bit behind his shirt as well. And that may just be it is. It's that's part of um, what's coming across the front of his uh, jacket here. That's some of the same. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that in white. Um, or basically what I was doing here. I think we're going to have to change. I think we're going to have to change his color from uh, this jacket color from red. I think if we change that, it'll be in the correct direction. I don't think having the white fur on the sleeves and stuff is the problem. It needs to be a light color so it pops. But I think the red, I think the red jacket is the issue. It's a little too Santa Claus-ish. So we may, again, the benefits of painting really thin. I could probably change his jacket color five times and it's not gonna affect the detail of the casting because I paint so thin.
Okay, nauseating blue. Let's do it. Oh, this one's not even, oh, yeah, it is. Let's use this one. This one's in better shape than the other one. Be careful and not make a mess. Oh, yeah, look at that. It, it has a smell and it doesn't have a smell. It's... Now we need to use this. Let's get some of this color out here. Let's find a spot we can work with this. Um which is getting harder and harder to do. Let's flip this around. This almost looks like the color of Grimace. Remember Grimace from McDonald, Ronald McDonald? That fat purple bastard? I don't know if he's a bastard, but he's certainly fat. He's one walking muffin top. The purple muffin top. <laughs> Didn't think you were going to wake up this morning and hear about Ronald McDonald's friends. Mix this with black. And it's carefully, try to not touch the any other colors around it so I don't create an extra bunch of extra work for myself. It's going to look almost black because that's what the point we want to start from. Ah, a comment. Excellent. Did I finish up with an overall matte varnish? I do. I, I clear coat uh, gloss and then I brush on super, super flat stuff and I brush it on really, really thick. The thing is, is you can't go over it. You can't, once you apply it, you can apply it thick, but then don't come back and, or it'll show brush strokes or even worse, it'll pull the paint off the bottom. And, um, I didn't mind, when I first started painting these figures, I used a semi-gloss. But the semi-gloss fools your eye into thinking that there's extra highlights, and you're going through all this effort to create highlights where you want them. So why would you have your eye get distracted from the whole point to begin with? Okay, so here's our starting point. He's already looking a little bit more reasonable. I do need to watch... How much of this color I add because I don't want it to look like he's purple okay so I'm actually all right with his jacket being kind of dark and then I can always lighten up his sleeves into like a light gray or something like that but I don't want I don't want it to look like he's some king so let's take this opportunity to go ahead and do a little test pattern here 
Let's add a little bit of white and lighten this up and see what direction we would go in if I would stop it right now. It ends up turning in like a purplish gray, which isn't bad. That's not that bad. Um, if I take this and add more color to it and then add white, that's not bad either. And I think that's probably what I'm going to do. Like I said, I'm prepared to do this a couple times to get it just right to where I'm happy with it. Let's highlight with this right here. Let's just create a new batch that's away from these contaminants. Okay, let's add a little bit more of the core color here. Yeah, we need to add more now. somewhere in between those two. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Cat Roger, good morning. Enjoy the paint along. Thanks for coming by. Once again. And then we're going to start adding white to this. So I don't want this guy to look like Alexander the Great or Pyrrhus or a French king or somebody who's super royalty. I just want him to have an exotic colored jacket. Um, that's it. I just want him to have an exotic colored jacket. Maybe some kind of velvet thing. All right, we need to go to a smaller brush at this point. Not that that one's too terribly bad, but. Yeah. And as always, I appreciate you guys coming by and saying hi and give us a distraction from the real world. This fantasy world where everything is well. That's why I don't understand people to get angry at games. It's just a damn game. You know? It doesn't matter. We should should be relaxing. Your life doesn't depend on it, thankfully. And just enjoy the camaraderie. Hans Zieten, welcome. How long have I been on here? An hour and a half. Notice we haven't had any of the Russian interlopers. They must be busy doing something else. I don't know if they're really Russian. Just the, the first couple ones that seem like they're, um, their little name was like backwards Cyrillic or something like that. That's why they got that name. This looks like it's going in the correct direction now, by the way. At first glance, the initial impression is that it's going in the correct direction. But I wouldn't have been able to do that had I not taken out all the other variables of what all the other pieces of equipment could possibly look like. And I don't know if you guys can get a good look at the color here. Let me, let me hold this guy correctly so we don't have a, a problem. And let me put my glasses on so I can see. Oh, you guys can't see that. I don't know. It's very subtle color. It has purple in it because this blue has purple in it. Not that it's a, a purple in and of itself. And I think we're going to highlight one more. We're going to go up one step. 
that helps bury it, go into the gray area more and less away from anything that's potentially purplish. One of my coined phrases, and I don't know where I got it from. I don't, I don't think I got it from anybody. It just One of my coined phrases is, persistence is the key to victory. If you give up, you're not going to win. For sure. So, can't figure out how to paint this guy. Giving up and not painting it is not going to get him painted. So, you, sometimes you just need a punt. Either go to a different figure... Or maybe paint some other stuff on them to help you decide, is this really what I want? Is this going to look good with these other things on there? I think I got them where I'm happy with them. Hallelujah. Again, we'll have to post pictures. It's probably this light that I have here is awesome for painting, but it also distorts and really it's too intense for some of these subtle colors and it makes them look more washed out than they normally would, but that at least kind of gives you a glimpse. I mean, if you're interested in what it looks like. Okay, there's an under color here. Looks of, of something that he's got underneath that um, shirt. I'm going to refrain from using red. I do not want to have anything Santa-like. His hat is Santa-like enough. Um, I'm gonna do something with I'm gonna do something with blue here. And it looks like there's almost like little rivets in it. It looks like it might be studded something. This may not be my first choice in colors to use for something studded, but I think it's going to work well with a color palette that we have, that we've chosen so far and in the spot where it needs to go. Now, do we still have some of this metal here in the corner? Okay, we have the undershirt in black, the pants in black. Let's put some reins on this guy. And for that, we're going to use the 
this buff color. Yep. Or dark sand. That one works too. They're they're kissing cousins anyways. Is that incestu incestuous? Kissing cousins. Mildly incestuous. Read on a semi-gloss and full gloss comment causing false highlights. I want the highlights specifically where I place Medicare. Oh, okay. We won't read that out. <laughs> Although it didn't look like you were saying anything appropriate. You might, have, you might have misspelled something and that would drive me crazy too. Uh, I didn't finish the end of your comment there, Randy. But... Um, yeah, when I first was doing World War II, so before 1996, I had never painted anything that uh, was figures. It was always like either micro armor tanks or ships, and I never sealed them with anything. Um, you know, there was no internet that I had access to, so we couldn't share ideas with each other. So I just had never sealed them with anything. I would paint my 2400 scale ships in solid colors and give them a black wash and that was it and um, at some point I came up with some kind of an article and it had said that if you put your if you put your your pewter miniatures or whatever in the oven and I don't know, 300 degrees, whatever the degrees was for 20 or 30 minutes, it would bake that color on. I don't know, like an idiot, I decided to try it. I was living alone at the time, and I bought this cooking tray or whatever, and I had put on several ships. The only one I could remember was a GHQ model of the Rodney. My, one of my favorite ships at the time, and still to this day, really cool looking vessel, if you're into that kind of thing. And uh, I painted it in its basic color, and I went in and I baked it. Nothing happened to it, because um, the melting point of the of the metal is a lot higher than the oven is. But you know, I don't know that it made it any more durable. But that's what an article said. But um, none of my stuff was ever sealed until 1996, when I was painting figures, and. I was sealing with two coats of semi-gloss. Um, all my World War II figures are sealed that way, and and they look okay. It's not like that, but but it is a, it is slightly distracting now. Um, and uh, now I no longer do that. But that's really the only thing that's changed on my figure painting since then. I actually use less colors now, less layers than I used to do back then. I used to use an absurd amount of layers. And those figures that I painted back then, I think still look good. Other than the basing. So at some point, I may be... I've thought about doing that. I've thought of like, well, let me base some of them as I go basing these. Like, if it's goop time... I will go ahead and goop this army that I'm doing and then on the side goop a couple of the figures and just bring them up to standard but I just haven't done that. I don't want to get pulled in lots of different directions. One of the things that causes stress for me is to have a lot of things started and none of them finished. It's not very um, comforting to do that. But my World War II figures were all painted 20 plus years ago. I'm still very proud of them. And honestly, I should put them in my little display case there. Just the basing is just, you know, I, we didn't know any better. We painted the base green and, you know, no basing material and just put it in the woodland scenic stuff, which I don't use that woodland scenic stuff anymore. That's extremely primitive by what I have access to now. Stephen Gross, good morning. I'm 
Okay. Now we need to do the we need to do the horse hair, which is going to be black or damn near black. Maybe we'll lighten it up some just for some extra contrast. Uh, do you ever give yourself painting deadlines or targets, or you just go with the flow? Um, I used to give myself painting got, um, deadlines. Um, it used to be back when we had conventions, and this year looks like it may be a semi-normal year, but who knows um, for conventions. But usually I would, I would create events so it would motivate me to paint, finish an army. But what ended up happening is, is that um, if it looked like I couldn't get to the event, I would either not play that army in the event or morph the figures. Um, my early Russians, for instance, were in a Russian theme event that I wasn't able to get the knights done. So I abused Ostrogoth's knights for their knights instead of the, the standard early Russian feudal type knights, and which aren't close, but they aren't horrible. There's other, there's worse choices I could have done. So I ended up actually winning one of the tournaments with them. And so my motivation to finish up the Knights went out the window. So I started working on two or three other armies, maybe three, four, five, six other armies before I came back to the Knights and finished them. So I find that extremely unsatisfying. And uh, one of the things that helped in the couple years that we didn't have conventions is because there wasn't a deadline, I actually got more done. Um, so I am not going to give myself deadlines anymore. Um, they'll get done when they get done and I'm going to try to get them done. But you know, there's, if I get these guys going on a roll, there's a convention coming up in, in April. And one of the events is an arm. I'd like to use an army that I already have but is not 3.0 compatible and I haven't played them in a long time. So at some point I can, and, and I don't have to use this army in any of the events. There's other armies I could use in their place. So I thought a couple of weeks ago, maybe I should stop working on these Volokians and, and finish up that other army. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that because the Volokians won't get done. Something will happen and I won't finish that army either. And I went nowhere. So what's actually more important for me now than getting something done by a convention for a convention is to get something done for a video for you guys. Well, it's for me too. So I'd rather get the army done correctly, complete to a level that I want it, and then we get to use them a lot. Not, well, here's a half-baked army. And I got them done for one convention because if I get them done for for an event I'm just going to play them three times but if I get them done for videos we'll play through all their enemies and and so forth so my mentality has changed a little bit for the better I think or I enjoy it better it works for me than it has in the past and uh, I'm not going to deadlines just don't work with me they just, they're stress inducing and uh, there's just some days I don't want to paint and I should be able to not paint if I don't want to. And uh, even with that, I'm getting more done than I've ever gotten done before, but it's mainly because of videos like this, because it allows me to stay on track and you know paint for two, three hours in a row. And you know I'm not gonna start a painting video, have eight of you guys on here, and then all of a sudden say, you know, barring I'm falling asleep, because that has happened a couple times, so I apologize. I, I don't start a video with the intention of being extreme, extremely short, but it keeps me on task a lot better than anything else can. And I'm getting a lot more accomplished now than I ever have. So I appreciate you guys tuning in and 
helping me meet those, I don't know if I call them goals because they're not set in stone where they need to be, but my goal now is like, I'm going to start an army and I'm going to finish them and I'm not going to get sidetracked and they'll get done when they get done and I don't even want to think about who's next because if I've already planned out the next three armies, that takes a lot of the fun out of me. I like to fantasize about who I could possibly, am I going to do Byzantines next or pre-feudal Scots, you know? Um, how much do I have left to finish this army? Okay, so minimum to get these guys playable in a video, that's how I need to think, is this figure, these two figures, and then the combat troops are done. I've got the camp, which, you know, we've got guys getting a wooden enema over here. Okay, there's like 14 of those figures for the camp, and then they're done, and then I will play them. Um... We're still going to do the Moldavian Commander, which is another, which is a Knight Command stand, and we're going to do the Polish Allies. Um, so really, a camp, two commanders, and about six other stands, maybe five other stands. So honestly, not a whole lot. I mean, I got thirteen done. You know, we'll see now. Will I get the polls done before I switch to doing the other army that's the, for the convention? Maybe. Yeah, I'm going to finish the polls before. I'm, I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to jump around. So, spell check botched me up so much I couldn't fix it. Yeah, it happens. So, yeah, no deadlines is what works for me. No deadlines. Let's go a little bit lighter on this horse here. In a few places. And we're going to wait to do if there's any socks or anything on this guy completely until the end, until we're done with all the three. Okay. Uh, oh, there's a little thing here by the horse. We got to do that in white just so it stands out. Well, I guess I could do it in red, but there's a lot of red around him. Let's do it in white. There's so much black around him. I'm not sure if this horse is going to have any socks or not. Okay, I'm going to do the banner bearer next because the other guy I can kind of do whatever I want to kind of fit in because the banner bearer does have a constant and the constant is what I want on his shield. Okay, now which one of these two am I going to have? They're the same length. Whoops. I'm going to have this guy that is not as active be the guy carrying the banner. Okay. 
let me take a look at something here. These are in a precarious position. Let's move those guys over. Let's take a look at one thing here off the screen. Oh, I could have done it there. All right. Get in, get on my Pinterest where I've saved several things. Avoid looking at any news. And lock ins. This guy has a long jacket and looks like these hats that they have are at least somebody's artist interpretation is that they're brownish a little bit. Yeah. Well, one of them, the main color of them is going to be is I don't want him to outshine the, I don't want him to outshine Dracula. So it draws attention away from him. Is this shadow gray? Oh, this one's unopened. I got an I got an open shadow gray here somewhere. Oh, that's a green. I think I got an open shadow gray. Maybe I'm going crazy. We're all going crazy. The speed of which is the variable. It's not supposed to be. What are you doing over there? I don't want to open a shadow gray if I can get away with it. It'd be nice to say, I've got this one. It's not even opened yet. Let's see. I'm going to have to go to the little boy's room. I've had too many liquids. Let me take a pause here. And um, I'll be right back. Let's do the... Be right back.
Okay, we're back. Bought two drinks. No, that's not a beer. <laughs> Another way to not get anything done. What might the next army be? More like, what won't it be? I have no idea. I don't want to fan... I mean, I could fantasize about it, but I'm not going to make a decision. Um, it's probably not going to be a conventional army. Only because I'm really enjoying these unconventional armies. Here they are. The goddamn Russians are here. They have a special place in my heart right now, so let's flush this guy. I don't know if he's Russian or not. He's Russian type lingo type name. I should put reason to report it promotes terrorism. <laughs> ah, Slavic, welcome. Uh oh, I gotta try this again. Slavic. Or Krasik. Oh well, I'm just gonna give up. I think I got it right last time. A million pardons if I didn't say your name correctly. I'm still most better than most people in this country. It's not saying anything. I understand that. At least I have an interest in saying your name correctly. And that should be, that's a big difference, you know. So, anyhow, welcome. Welcome. I believe you're in Poland, are you not? You got front row tickets. If you are, you got front row tickets right now, unfortunately. Stay safe, my friend. I don't know where that other shadow gray is. I may have to open this. <gasps> it's been sealed ever since Thatcher was in power. That's how old this thing is. I really don't want to open it. Damn it. Mm, how... You know, for, I don't consider myself very messy, but sometimes I give myself doubts. Now, I've seen what other people's hobby areas look like. And you guys, I don't know how you get anything done. Those people that fall into that category. I had another Shadow Grey. Maybe it died. Do I have to use this one? Yeah. Okay, here we go. I should do an unboxing video of opening a Shadow Grey from circa 1990. 89 or whatever. Yes, it is Poland. Thinking about a Ukrainian front. Yeah. You... I've had a lot of trouble watching the news last week. I don't want to dwell on it because there's nothing we can do about it, but I'm very disappointed in humanity. I would have thought we would have moved past that. Oh, I found more Games Workshop paints. They're over here. These dumb bastards are not in the right place. Is my, is my Shadow Grey there? It is. I don't have to open one. Yeah. Speaking of Polish, they're up. They're, we're going to be painting them soon. We'll have to call on the Poles to save Europe again. That's right. I remember. <laughs> it's Galina Uchenko. Ukrainian, I believe. Well, that's okay. I still don't want them spamming here. They got better things to do than spamming my website. 
They got a full plate over there. They don't need to be watching my uh, miniatures painting, which is pretty much irrelevant. Pretty much irrelevant. This one's very much alive. I was going to pull some of this stuff off, but I, I don't want to have a, a situation develop. There we go. Because the only drawback of of these paints is they accumulate. I'm getting it's getting really difficult to find some unobstructed space here to work on and since you just arrived I'll mention it again we did do a video yesterday its theme is a little bit current events um, inspired by that unfortunately inspired by that but you'll check it out and we did four battles and it's already it's, it's being processed by YouTube so I don't it should be done by the time this video comes in so hmm. there's a lot in our mythology about Poland as a savior on this and that reality there's a lot to speak about this in every situation oh no there's a camera up there don't bump into that all right here we go let's get some of this color here Wow, the color is coming through the the light through the transom window is making it really difficult to <coughs> distinguish some of this stuff. All right, let's close this thing up. We didn't have to open the, the other shadow gray. Hooray, save it for posterity. Right there. Battle of Vienna is an example of helping Europe. When Poland and Hungary were countries that, in a sense, were a bridge between Ottoman Turkey and the West. Which Battle of Vienna? There were several. You're talking about eight, 19, eight, uh, 1683? Because there's the other one. There's the 1525 one. That was my people, or my ancestors, or funded by my ancestors, or the cousins of my ancestors. 1525. <sighs> Actually, there was, I think, another one between there, too, right? 1683 was the last one, I think, of Vienna. I want to say there was three. I could be wrong. Got a war game that period more to know more about it. Let's use a bigger brush here so we can get things done. All right. He is going to have this silly color all over him. All over him. And I'm almost to the point where I want to throw this thing away.
This almost looks like a Muslim figure, like a Turk in his style of dress because he has a, um, a sash around his waist instead of a belt. I'm sure there's some influences there, but this is a figure that's actually marketed as um, Valachian Horseman, I believe. So, this is the part of a cavalry stand, and this will be the standard bearer. So, getting back to Steve's question, Steve, I don't remember if you're here or not. Sorry, I got distracted by my Polish friend that showed up. I like the irregular armies. I mean, it's not likely that I'll be doing something like medieval French or something like that. Nothing against the French. That is just a very standard army. And I'm, I'm enjoying playing armies that are a little bit stranger and um, honestly not as good. Um, they're more usable and fun scenarios. I'm enjoying those. Wimp Wars and things like that a lot more than just a standard open game. So, I don't think it'll be Feudal English. That's another one that's on my list. I have, I have many armies that are on my short list. I either have figures for them or have most of the figures for them. Um, I could roll into, since, since I'm going to be doing four or five later Polish armies figures anyway stands I could just do the rest of the later polls it's unlikely I will do that not anything against the polls but the polls are very mounted heavy and I think at some later date I probably will finish out the rest of the Polish army because it fits kind of nicely into where we are but I don't think this is the time to do that I could be wrong I may just roll into the Polish army because I've got to do at least, i got to do three knights and a fast blade and maybe a cavalry. So at that point, I've already got a good chunk of the army done. And, you know, they've got nice banners and heraldry and all that kind of stuff. So that's a possibility. Um, I'm only going to finish, uh, I, you know, there was talk of, I was thinking about possibly finishing up my Samurai or making my Samurai 3.0 compatible. So that's a thought. But I'm only going to do that if I can do it in time to play them at Recon. If not, I'm not going to do that because that just pulls me into a different direction. Um, they, they don't have enough different enemies. And they're not assorted enough in what they look like as far as troop types. So it's not really calling on me to do that. Um... Other options are, I keep talking about pre fuel Scots, only because they're going to be like this army and the Irish in that they will look not very bright. They will look very rustic with some color here and some color there, but it's the exception to the rule, not the rule. And I've been enjoying painting those armies a lot. Um, Mitch really wants me to do Byzantines. Um, I have a good chunk of the Byzantine figures that I would need for about a couple of the armies. They would fit nicely into uh, my Ostrogoths, which they fight. And um, so that's a possibility. The reason against doing the Byzantines is it's kind of a bit of a standard army. It's not weird and light and, and weird troop types and stuff like that. Um, but it would fit nicely into what we're doing. Um, I have uh, Egyptian Mamluks set and ready to go. I've already actually sorted the army. That would be fun. They have a yellow flag. There's an incentive, a flag that's all yellow. It would look really cool. No war wagon for my Polish ally. Only three knives. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do the, the war wagon. I don't know if I'm going to do it... Um, at this stage, because that's a big commitment on numbers of figures and stuff. But yes, I have the, they're actually up here on the desk to do both of them. Um, they'd only be able to have one as an ally. 
Um, I don't think that that's going to be very useful for the Valachians. Well, actually, l let me take a step back. If you're playing by DBA 3.0, you can use the Poles as an ally to the Valachians. And the Valachians being, when you use the Cavalry General, they're Valachians. When you use a Knight General, they're Moldavians. If you dig deeper in the DBMM book, you'll realize that the Poles were only allies for one period for the Moldavians only. The Valachians never had them as allies. So if you want to play them correctly, according to Phil Barker, and you're, wor and you're worried about it, then you shouldn't use the poles with a cavalry general for the Valachians. They should have a knight general, which means they're the Moldavians. So I am making a Moldavian commander. Um, I don't know if it'll be exactly Stephen the Great or not, but it'll be something along the lines of that. I got a figure specifically coming for him, one that got really close to what he looks like in some artwork. So we've got, we got a Stephenish the Great uh, figure coming for the Moldavians. So the Moldavians are uh, the Moldavians are the ones that would have the Polish allies. You know, technically, okay. Um, it doesn't specify that in DBM and DBA because in DBA a lot of things are dumbed down or glossed over because you know you'll get more details when you play the more detail oriented game, which I think is kind of you know silly. But um, but that is that is one of the things. If if I can do it realistically, I will try and do it realistically because um, it's just another way of learning about history. So um, I don't know if the war wagons are that useful as the, as as an as an ally um, for this army. They need heavy foot more than anything else. So the poles. The, they have to, the Polish allies, they have to take a knight. And then their second unit has to either be a knight or a cavalry. And the third unit can be any of the other types that, you know, that you haven't uh, chosen. I mean, you could still pick another knight. You could still pick another cav because there's other ones to pick from. Um, but more than likely, it will be the fast blade that they will use. Um, because the Valachians are really lacking in heavy foot really lacking in heavy foot so I think that more than likely the fast blade is going to be the unit that's going to be used not the war wagon the war wagon doesn't really I mean I have another shooter but I don't have another target of artillery well I already have two bows that are already I'm going to have to play keep away with the artillery so why would I want a war wagon also now looking cool of course it'll look awesome you know uh, war wagons are Cute little pieces. But I think I will save those for when I build the Polish army, not as allies. Unfortunately, Vlad army is unplayable without ally, despite the historicity. Um, unless you play something like a Wimp Wars or a Soloy Silius, where everybody has weak armies. Um, I think they would do okay, and we'll find this out, because we're going to play through them against the Turks. Because... The Turks are never going to win terrain, and um, Vlad can just put a forest down, and the Turks really can't deal with that. So I think that they can fight the Turks okay. I think they can fight the Hungarians okay if I dumb down the Hungarians and use and max out their Soloi. So it won't be that bad. It won't be that bad. But there's a lot of different ways to play that army. That was one of the reasons why I, I got them. You could play a wimp like that, add some allies and buff them up. I already have Hungarian allies because I have a Hungarian ally, uh, army. So, um, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I think they're going to be uh, some fun games. So, um, I've got, I didn't realize I had this. I had Lithuanian troops. I had Lith a lot of Lithuanian horse. I don't have any dismounted Lithuanian archers, but... Like I mentioned earlier, that army just seems dirty to play it. It just seems like the reason to build it would be just because it's a gimmick army. And the only reason I would build it is because it fits into the theme of where we're doing stuff right now. And also, um, I have the figures for them. So, uh, I 
I'm certain Slavic is referring to the 1683 battle when the Wing Hussars arrived in the nick of time. Yeah, I'm not so familiar with that one. Yeah, I, I knew that was one of the other ones. That's that's the last one, I think. There Maybe there was a, a siege after that. Um, but, um, yeah, impatient to see it in action. Oh, the war wagon? Well, you've, if, if you're interested in seeing war wagons in action, my Hungarians have used them quite a bit. And they're... I had higher hopes for them to do than what they did. And you might see some war wagons in action in the video that comes up today. But they won't be Polish ones. Not to give anything away. Um, but... Um, Yeah, the 1683, that's that's a little out of my realm. Uh, I, I, as far as uh, early modern period or, or renaissance, as I like to call it, that most people understand, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the stuff in the 1500s more than the 1600s and stuff. Um, but yeah, I've got wing hussars to paint, but I don't know what the hell I was, I'd paint them for. Um, I'm not going to be working on my rules anytime soon for Renaissance, so in order to keep my sanity. So. Everybody likes Polish hussar, uh, wing hussars, except the Turks. Everybody likes them. They're cool looking. They're unique. They have elan. Everybody likes troops with elan. Patient to see him in action. Well, there's two ways you can do it. We can paint him like crap. Well, I can't, okay, because I couldn't live with myself. But I can paint them quickly and do a crummy job. Or we can give them the honor they deserve, paint them correctly, and when they come out, you'll be proud of them. Well, you'll be proud of them what they look like. They may, you know, play like a bunch of sissies and roll a bunch of ones, okay? That can always happen. But at least they'll look good doing it. <laughs> That's the one thing I can control. I can control what they look like. I can't control how they're going to play like. So Egyptian Mamluks, where was I left off? Um, the Zanj, which is the uh, East African... Um, a black slave, not all black slave uprising, but predominantly black slave uprising in the Abbasid period. I, I put those figures together. That's kind of a really interesting army. And an opportunity to paint some darker skinned folks, which are always fun. Um, because unlike my Caucasian colors, I mix those up a little bit and have different shades. They're, they're fun to do. I've painted some dark skinned folks before and... and and I, I enjoy that. Um, and it's an unusual army. And, um, and we already have the Abbasids and stuff for them. Abbasids, Abbasids, yeah. Tomato, tomato. Um, so there's quite a few options. I've even dodged a couple bullets when I was in Mexico recently. I almost got a wild hair up my ass to order the allies from a conquistadors i have all the conquistadors i want to do but that's for the tlax column list it's a book four list i want to say it's 419 c i could be wrong but uh it's under the tlax column list and the last one actually has four spanish units i have all those i've got figures i really really like i've had them a long time but um 
I don't like playing my people because I don't want them to lose. It's a little bit more personal. <laughs> Odo, impatient to see Vlad's army in action. Oh, it'll happen soon. It'll happen in the next... Let me just round up to... It'll happen in the next month. So by the end of March, they should be in action. So... Maybe not with all the polls and everything. Um, and I think I am going to keep separate win-loss ratios for Steven and, and Vlad. They can compete to see which one does better than the other. I suspect Vlad will do better. I much prefer a cavalry general to a knight one. I like to be in control. So I don't like people running off and... Charging at the last minute. All right, let's see. Is this, is this white alive here? What else do I have that'd be ready to go for another army potentially? It's going to be one of those because I'm just not going to buy an army from scratch. Oh, Visigoths. Yeah. Got this thing about doing all my ancestor armies, and I'm pretty sure I've got some Visigoth blood in me. So, and they would fit nicely with uh, my Ostrogoths. And Mitch likes those late Romans, so there you go. That's a possibility. Um, I think that about wraps it up. Do I have anything in Asia? Let's see. Other than converting the, the, the samurai army... I don't think I have anything in Asia that I've already bought. And it's unlikely I'm going to buy something from scratch and work on it. I'd rather just use the core of what I already have and then work from there. Well, this guy's got a sash. Is a picture of that, that Valachian guy have a sash on him? If not, then we're probably going to paint him kind of subtly. Well, I can't tell whether he's got one or not. Okay. Seven of yous. Good morning. I actually have quite a few Polish people that come around. Yeah. Historical war gaming big in Poland. I, I would think that it would be big in places that had a history of, you know, Of doing stuff. You know, if your country has a rich history of doing military things, especially during this period, I would think that you'd be more interested in doing this. Unless you don't like the country that you're in, which is always a possibility. But um, I would think that would be a good tie-in. Okay, we're going to leave that as is and um, a standard color horse is just fine with me for this guy so that means just a run in the middle brown horse I'm not going to use a flat earth what is that leather color now that we can see a little bit better there's more light shining on this area here on the back is it this one well, this is werewolf fur
only system, the only thing I don't like about my system of storing these paints is if you want to grab the ones on the bottom, you got to move other ones out of the way, and sometimes one falls out without wanting to. So, all right, I've had enough of this thing. We're gonna we're gonna switch this out. It's bone dry over in this corner. Oh. All right. I don't know. It looks better than Jackson Pollock to me. At least there was a purpose behind this. Oh well. If you're fans of that stuff, then my sympathies. Go get your head examined. <laughs> I'm gonna be right back. I'm not gonna shut the video off. We're just gonna shut the sound off. I'll be right back and we'll put a new one and keep going. Okay, let's get my, my papers out. I need to order some of those soon. I know, I could probably just use the regular paper from the parchment paper or whatever. I'm not going to. I right, keep these guys in business. Buying a pack of papers every five years. <laughs> So, might as well use that. Don't have to be this anal attentive about it, but why not? Okay. Tony the Great. That's... Way too kind. Good morning, Joe. I'm greater than a lot of people that you hear about in the news, but that's not saying anything. How about Tony the Honest? I'd rather be that. Um... Don't fall down. I'm not bending over today. It's not a work day. We didn't sign up for that today. <laughs> All right, let's get our usual suspects out here in the middle. Who might that be? Mr. Black and Mrs. White. Yes, I did just assume the gender of my paint bottles. They're my bottles. We still going to have those stupid discussions with everything that's going on these days? 
With everything that's happened this week, are we really worried about that crap? All right. The old chocolate brown. I'm dying to do is the freaking the the shield. And this shield is gonna have the Moldavian coat of arms. So we're gonna have that little the crescent, the six sided star, and then the split. <clears throat> and then the stripes on the other half. So you'll see. It'll come out nicely. It will come out nicely. comes to stuff on shields and stuff. I got really high confidence it's going to turn out how I like it. So. so this is a mini figs figure on an Essex horse. Mainly because these figures, when I got them, came with no horses. And both figures are basically the same figure. I altered their hand a little bit. I think unintentionally. It just kind of happened. Um, but I want them on two different horses to add some variety. Because to have them look exactly the same just seems silly. So. That's my story. I was like, what time is it? I lost track of time. I know Joe's up, so it's pretty late. <laughs> uh, hey, you caught me painting, Joe. Amazing. Ah, you're on sometimes when I'm painting. Just the early morning one is what I'm talking about. I think we need to go to a smaller size to get up, get all up in here. 
Not that small. probably find another method to paint horses faster than this but I, I rather enjoy painting horses so why would I want to rush something I'm already enjoying to rush things I don't enjoy like priming well honestly using that Vallejo surface primer because it gets more places than anything else I still have to do a touch up here or there that's a that's a time-saving thing I mean I wish they already came primed primed well because you know you don't want somebody like oh we'll spray paint them to you at the factory and then you know they cover up all the detail so we don't want that to be the case but that's something i certainly don't enjoy i don't enjoy cleaning flash off figures at all it should be the responsibility of the manufacturer to have flat to have uh castings that, that, that aren't crummy I'll do it. It's not like I'm not going to do it, but that's a part I don't, I really don't care for at all. All right, I'm saying a little bit of white now. But, you know, I'm not looking forward to, to, to replace things that I really enjoy. That's why I'm not a fan of shield decals. I love painting shields. Now, I used them on the Russians because I needed a Russian flag and and they're really pretty, but I would have been fine painting all that stuff by hand. I just feel myself dragging just a little bit right now. Let's get to the point where I'm almost like immune to coffee in the mornings. It takes me so much to get me to feel it. Tiny little bit more.
Okay, I think we're good with that horse color. Now, let's look at this guy's hat again. I know it's brown, and I'm not going to use the same brown. I don't roll that way. It's super dark. So we'll probably use that SS camo black for that. Let's go ahead and do the shield. So why put it off? Why put off the fun part? All right. Let me see where I can find it. I have it saved here somewhere. It's easy to find. I thought I had it saved. I know exactly which one it is. So just give me a moment. It would help if I search for the correct thing, wouldn't it? Ooh, who's this? I thought I dropped it on Pinterest. Just give me a second. I know exactly what I'm looking for. It's a number of stripes and stuff that I want to get right. Because otherwise... What's this? Oh, we're going to have to save this. This is handy. I found something looking for something else. I love it. Save that. Sorry, I won't be but a minute. funny how you don't you can't find things when uh, when you want to and I thought I had this saved there it is 
There it is. Perfect. This is what we're looking for. And we will save this here. Okay, perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so the shield is split. Wow, this took so long to find this. It's ridiculous. That thing was up in my face every, all the time. Um, and I can't show you a screenshot because I'm not good like that. I'm a painter, not a, not a. Not a computer wizard. Okay, it's going to be a split shield. And half of it is light blue. So let's get the correct blue that we're going to start with. Um, because that's kind of important. And I think it's this one. Yeah. This is the blue that we want to use. Right now, we need to paint half of it blue, the left half. So let's get Let's get one more coat, brightening it up a little bit more. I actually think I went too far towards the middle. Easy to fix, easy to fix. It's very forgiving because you can right or wrong, so to speak. Very easily. Okay, I think we got both halves about the same size. Okay, so you want to end this. The other one is red and yellow. Okay, so because we're going to use yellow, we need to get yellow out. And we also need to get a brown. That brown will work fine. So let's put some yellow over here. And let's get some red. And I don't want this dark red. I want this scarlet one. One that's a little orangish. Don't need very much of either of those two colors. All right. I guess I probably should have the screen up from time to time to make sure that everything is in correct. Where it is. Can I just minimize this and leave it on the screen? Let's see. If I make this big, I may not be able to do that. Can I minimize the nope, that's that's big. Okay, that's smaller. How do I make this window not as big? Could I get away with doing that? I can. Okay, that's excellent. Let's make this smaller. Okay, good. And let's make this window. No, don't cancel out of it. Damn it, man. Uh, let's try this again. Um, let's minimize this. I never claimed I was good at this. All right, now. Go into my Pinterest and okay, now 
I should be able to. There we go. Okay. I've tried to watch videos how to improve this stuff. They're too complicated, man. People like are, have a wealth of information, but they'll start, okay, you do this and you do the other thing and you click that and you do it. I'm like, holy moly, man, slow down. So we're going to take this half. Um, let's create a dark, a dark red. Okay, let's create a dark red. I've tried watching those videos, man. And they're like, okay, you click this and you do the other. I'm like, slow it down, man. I have, I've, and I've, you try watching one step like eight times, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go back to painting. <laughs> get, me, get me out of here. That's like stress-inducing. Okay, so one half. Let's make sure we get the halves correct. is a red shade and then the other half is a blue shade all right so now we got to go to a smaller brush or one we think we have better control with the bottom one is yellow so let's do the yellows all right so we're going to come in here This is the color that we're going to use as the darkest shade on the yellow. Most we're going to cover most of this up anyways. And it starts with yellow here at the bottom. And let's see how thick, about how many do we have? Crap, I can't see. How many of each color? One, two, three, four, and then three reds. Okay, so there's one more yellow. All right, so three means we're gonna we're gonna end in yellow, and we're gonna start in yellow, and then we need two more. Okay, so that's about equidistant, and I can't see what you're seeing. So hopefully, I can't see it because my little view viewfinder is closed there. Okay. So we got those equidistance. The main thing is get everything lined up how you want it proportionally, then go in and give it detail. Don't start giving detail in one corner because you may end up with something that's not proportioned correctly and it's gonna look weird. So let's make these yellows bigger. So they're approximately the same size as the reds. Okay, that's pretty close. All right. Now we're gonna switch, we're gonna be switching between colors here a lot. And let's go to the reds, let's bring the red. Now this is where the wet palette came, comes in handy because I've already mixed this color. Now I can go back to it. I don't have to remix this and add a little bit more. So. And fill in the reds and we're gonna go up a level again. Filling in the red. And once again, let's go all the way to the core color, as I like to call it. Now we'll do the same with yellow. Rinse this out. Again, take this color that's already nicely mixed there and still waiting for us. Add this thinner. This is where the thinner really comes in handy because it's not grabbing and like trying to bring it across. And that's where you get clumpage and things like that. Hold it up to the camera. Okay, well, I couldn't see that comment. Um, yeah, let's put this down here. It's not focusing for whatever reason. It's just not. What if.
this camera app sucks. I hate that. I hate this camera app. But it's not disconnecting me. So then we are going to add this yellow. I need a producer. I'm just a effing painter. Let's see, can I, can I bring this up onto the, not onto the screen, but my screen? Now what happens if, all right, let's make it bigger. Let's zoom in more. Okay, and what's this button do? I wish you guys could see what I could see. That's, I think, about as good as it's going to get. So let's go use the pure yellow. Make sure it's not too runny or you'll end up having to fix what you just did. And good morning, John Carter. Um, and then let's add more of this and we can add a little bit of yellow. We don't need to use the white. Now, okay, I think that's what I needed to do. I need to make the, well, what if I did this? What if we just use this camera for the detail crap I do? There we go. That's what we need to do. How, dude, how big can we get? Look at that. That's about what I'm seeing. No, the horse is Essex. The figure is actually minifigs. Okay, we'll leave this thing up. I think maybe we solved the... I need to get really, really close. Okay, fair enough. All right, we can do that. Ace, is that a good thing? <laughs> All right. Now, let's switch to the other side. This hat has a moon and a six pointed star. I'd like to do them both in white. And I think I will, regardless of whether or not I see the moon in yellow. I'm going to do them both in white. I don't want to add yellow and white on the other side. It doesn't look right. Sometimes you just have to make a executive decision. Using this thin brush here. Although that one may have a wisp of a something. Okay, so we've got a half moon over here. And we've got a six pointed star. All right, this has got one little burr. Let's try that again. We, don't, we wanna have total freaking control for this. It may still have a little wisp. Okay, the star is gonna go from here to here and it's like an asterisk. So we're gonna have an X in the other direction. Okay, I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna bring it close. I think I've learned my lesson. Hey, as long as each time I do this, it gets better, and I'm talking about the, the videoing part. I just set some parameters there to kind of pacing. So everything is spread out. There's another one of those damn Russians. We'll delete you guys later. Okay.
that's not exactly how it's going to be, but that kind of does the pacing almost kind of like if I'm doing it in pencil of where it's going to be. So that's what we're going to build up from. Okay. Let's go ahead and add some white to this. Problem is it's hitting on that little fuzz before it actually hits the bristles. See if we can do something about that. Let's see if we can do something with this damn Chinese brush. I think we just solved it. All right, so let's come in with this lighter gray. So I'm going to see if it's blurry. Okay. We're slowly going to build that up. This is the, this is the stuff I enjoy doing. I think we can probably go to pure white at this point. That clear let's fill out ever so slightly ever so gently this six sided star careful I could probably leave it like that and be okay, but look at that. I'm going to leave this where it is. Obviously, we need to bring the, the blue up. even this other side of this, the crescent sun. Okay. Now, I, th I think that this is actually easier than drawing. So I actually prefer to use paint brushes than to use like an actual pencil because I feel like, or a pen, I feel like I have better control with it. And maybe you can't draw. Maybe you can't paint. These colors as evenly as you'd like when you do them in white, but when you come back and fill in with the other color, you can help kind of correct some of the, 
some of the inconsistencies there. All you got to do is just take it a step at a time. The biggest thing about shields is, and I'm, is even when you're like, even if you were to draw something on a piece of paper, kind of sketch out where everything is going to be so that you don't have this beautiful lion, but it's not, he's not centered perfectly on the shield. So you wasted all of this time and, and it looks great, but it's not in the center of the shield where you wanted them. So make sure you, you, you um, pace everything out, kind of sketching and um, that's the best advice I can give you. See there, I went over a little bit of the, of the white of the, of the star, no big deal. Hey, things aren't always going to turn out right here. We'll show you how to fix things too. Those expert painters that you guys see do make mistakes. They just edit their videos. That's way too much effort. We're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. Try to minimize how many we do so that we don't have to waste time correcting them. This is the highlight on the shield. I want to make sure it's not too light. If you think, hey, this is a little too finicky, your eye is going to go right to this design. This is time well spent. This is time well spent. I have a tiny little bit of the white to correct here on this star. Perfect. Now, let me show you what I got here. Let's not drop it on this. We don't want to redo this. Again, the color is a little washed out here, looking at my view of what I can see. Now, the final touch. You ready for this? Take the same brush. drop a line between the two designs that helps separate them from each other you can also drop a black line in between the red and the yellow I don't think it's necessary I think I did the red dark enough that it pops out nicely now we're gonna have the rim in metallic we don't have a metal corner but we're going to out let's take a look at this guy okay so you can get an idea of what they're going to look like on the stand together oh look the focus is actually decent there well maybe just move this around to where the focus is right so they're going to be riding like this i generally like to do the oh look i have to do it backwards the gen i de generally like the the commander to be i got to move it opposite of where i would want pay attention tony um that color is actually a little bit more realistic. It, this, the light I'm using just washes everything out. Um, this is kind of how they, they'll, they'll ride next to each other. This guy will be on the outside, so, um, flag towards the inside, and, um, and Dracula there just inside. So, and this is the Valachian arms on this particular figure. Um, but that's not what the, what's going to be on the flag. We're going to do a, a black dragon banner for the flag. And um, yeah, so see there's some details here on the bow case, but it's it's a little indescriptive exactly what they might be. So it could be, you know, it's impressionistic. It's what do you want it to be, you know? So this there's versions of this 
of the six pointed star in yellow. And I think that it looks better with both of them being white because the moon is in white. And I think it looks better that they're both in white. So that's the artistic um, license there that we all use from time to time. Uh, right now I'm painting hundreds of buttons and losing the will to live. Oh dear God. What is the painting thing that do I hate? Clean flash, but it's not a painting thing. So, um, priming. Any monkey can do that. Look what I just did with a shield. And it's relatively easy and it's fun. Give the priming to somebody who, who you know, anybody can do that. You know, I, I need to use my, my patience for this. Let's paint his face. Let's give this guy personality. Again, one of those things everybody hates, right? Um, buttons. <laughs> no, I don't have to do too many of those in the scale. Hundreds of buttons. All right. Let's get our usual suspects, which involves red leather. We can zoom this back out now, I think. Maybe a little bit. I didn't realize that's what I need to do for the close-ups. Got it. Okay. Good. Maybe we can do a, a worthy close-up of this guy's face. Now... I happen to like minifigs because minifigs, even though their faces are kind of bland, they look like it could be a person. So it's not somebody who's has very strong features that you can have an odd looking person like that in your army. But when your entire army looks like they're a bunch of clones of some freak, not so good. And there's a manufacturer there's two manufacturers in 20 not so much of an issue in 15 but in 20 millimeter that i used to do there's two manufacturers in particular that really strong featured faces and i dislike both of the manufacturers one of them is britannia and the other one is um mlr what else are they called by anyhow i i don't want to go grab my 20s i'd show you what i meant um, what's the, what is the other name for MLR? You know, I haven't talked about the stuff in like 20 years, so I couldn't remember. Um, anyhow, they make lots of stuff, but, um, the MLR figures have very pronounced cheekbones, like pronounced, and they all look the same. And, um, it's kind of hard to hide that in your entire army when they both have very dominant figures that you don't see everyone, every single person having. Um, the other one, Britannia has a very, almost like an action figure type face. I really need to pay attention to what I'm doing because I'm just rambling. And he has an action figure type face and every single person in the army has the exact same face. So, you know, it's like if you had a... Um, um, if you had a figure that, say, looked like, uh, what's the movie on the Eastern Front? Because we're talking about World War II figures in 20 millimeter scale here. Um, James Coburn, Steiner, okay? Uh, his character in, um, wow, I'm really losing my memory to things I don't think about. You guys, you guys will cross of iron, okay? Uh, James Coburn has a very particular look. He doesn't necessarily look like a freak of nature or anything by any stretch of the imagination. But you don't want your entire army to look like James Coburn of every single figure, whether they're, you know, whether they're a Lancer, whether they're, you know, uh, cleaning out a, a, a latrine, the general, you know, you can't have people that have very distinct faces and every, everybody in the army look the same, you know, um, they need to be a little bit more subtle. Um, so I have a gripe with Essex figures sometimes about some of their strange posings. Um, I like Essex figures as long as I get to pick the poses. They make the right figures, whether you get them in the army pack or not, is just, you know, just total blind luck. Um, but their faces 
having enough detail, they don't have a distinct face that's like, well, there can only be a few people that look like that. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but now if you're just kind of throwing paint on there and giving them a wash and you don't care, well, that's cool. But I happen to, I happen to care and enjoy painting faces. So I don't know if that helped in any way. Um, what is the MLR company? They're still around and they make a lot of stuff. Just like Britannia makes a lot of stuff. But the Britannians all have the same face. Whether you're doing desert rats, whether you're doing German uh, uh, Luftwaffe troops, they all have the same face. So it's just weird. Now, with that said, that guy sculpts a lot better than I would. But I'm just saying that What's the name of that company? That's going to drive me up the freaking wall. Anyhow, I'm not a fan of their stuff. I'm not a fan of their figures. And I have a fair number of them. Sight unseen. And some of their guns are almost like tubular. You could tell they made them out of like a tube and then they built the other stuff around it. So they don't look like, some of the rifles don't look like what they should look like. Like they actually make a cross of iron set, this particular company. Um, they've made like five or six figures and they've got one for Steiner and the, and the guy that's dirty, whatever his name is, he's like a Hungarian dude. I haven't seen the movie in a long time. Um, so they got like a sniper figure and whatever this guy is that has the, he has like a funny hat or something. I think he's like a Hungarian character with bad teeth and smells. He's kind of like a pig pen kind of guy. And, um, you know, but they all have exactly the same face. <laughs> so. So I got him and didn't do anything with him because I'm like, oh, these guys aren't worth my time. Poxy's kind of thick around this guy's hand because I did have to replace the lances. The lances these guys came with, other than being really wobbly because it was a soft alloy, these are old figures. These are figures that the, the miniature was probably cast a long time ago. So it had an alloy that didn't have a very high tin content. So it was kind of bendy-ish. And I was like, these lances just aren't going to make it. So I replaced them with pins. And it was a chore because... Um, minifigs actually has pretty realistically sized hands. So what that means is, is that if you drill them out, you got to be really, really careful with them. And I, and I had, I think I botched up a couple figures trying to drill them out of these. So I built it up with epoxy, the, the joint there, 
between the um, between this pen and the hand. So I've got kind of like a little bubble thing there. So we're just going to paint over that and, and not draw attention to it. But um, I wouldn't want to go in there and scrape that excess off because I'm going to damage the hand because the dam the hand is actually very very soft. So hopefully I don't do all this nice painting and then at some point something catastrophic happens to this guy. But we'll do what we can do. As I say with my damaged uh, camp for the uh, Amorites, don't touch the little camel. The little camel's got a broken leg. So don't touch the little camel. So let me show you. I think this is worth of a close up at this point. Let's let's do this. Remember, this is an average run in the mill figure that people don't have any big love for. About every figure manufacturer is worth painting. Just about. Some are better than others, but See if I can get away with just leaving it on this screen because zooming in and out that's going to take some time. So, so, can I paint this in a place where you guys could possibly see that I'm doing something? Yes, okay. Hey, that's what the big view is for, okay? So, let's add some highlights to the hand here. Oh, too watery, too watery. Danger, Will Robinson. Let's do another mix here. The nose, the chin, the cheekbones, a little bit of the ears, anything that's going to catch the light. Let's go to the back of the hand here. All right, I'll put my glasses on so I can see that when it's in focus. We need this so I don't shake as much. Not really shake, but move around. All right, let's get this guy focused where he needs to be. Again, this light is just it's too powerful. Now I need it again. Okay, I'm not going to bring it up anymore. <laughs> All that I forgot, and there's a hand. There's a typical minifigs pose that has a hand behind the shield back here. All right, let's just do that one hand. Let's just focus on getting that one hand done. Not a big deal. Just annoying because I could have already had them done. All right, this with this. That's a typical minifigs pose, which honestly, for being a mini, for being a typical pose, it's not a bad one, because it's a pose that you could see lots of people in. If you have a figure that has a strange pose, like uh, 
a horse that has his head hung down in shame or feeding or or um, a figure that's like, here's this javelin, why don't you take it kind of thing. If, if you have multiple people in your army in that odd pose, it's going to look really weird. Um, unless they're doing some kind of strange medieval jazzercise thing. You know, it's okay to have a weird pose. Just think of it as like a still picture. Like if you could go back in time and take a picture of these guys marching somewhere and you just happen to catch this, you, you happen to catch this picture of this army on the march or army in action or army before the action or whatever. And you see the still and half of the army or more than half the army is in this odd pose like, I don't want to have anything to do with the spear. It looks really weird. That's the way I look at it, you know. Um, so, you don't see his eyes. You need to look closer. They're not painted there. I prefer not to paint eyes because it's unnecessary. And whatever, um, whatever size eye I make, it's going to be larger than they really would be. And... Many figs makes impressionistic eyes. Um, their their faces are kind of they're kind of there, but they're not there. So, all right, we need to do. Let's do the metal around the rim of the shield. We don't have a metal corner. We can go ahead and close. Let's just minimize it, leave it open. I'm not going to go up to the edge of this. I'm going to leave a tiny little bit of black. So it pops. Wish I'd done, I wish I'd started doing this before my I had to switch glasses. It's kind of it's just time consuming. So we have a little bit of a barrier there. What if I change? Where is this little option? Let's look at this option here. Okay, white balance automatic. Let's take white balance off automatic and put it as daylight. Because this is a daylight bulb, and that is much better. That is much closer. I just got to remember to do that every single time. I just got to remember to do that every single time I do it. Let's look at the let's look at the big man himself. Studio WGS, welcome. Trying not to touch the edge of the horse. There's that detail I was talking about on the. On the. Uh, bow case. Yeah. Gonna look good. I'm happy so far. I'm wearing a big happy hat. I think I made some progress of being able to zoom in these pictures for you guys, so that's good. 
Um, shields look great. Oh, yeah. We did it live, too. I love doing shields. Sign me up. Probably my favorite thing to do. Shields. More than anything else. Because um, you get to do some historical research and put your own spin on it, too. Um, so, yeah, that's nice. Let's do his hat. His hat is brown. Brownish. Let me look at this SS Camel Black. I think it may be a little too dark. That is the Impaler. That's that's him right here. That's that's the big man himself. We had to change the color of his jacket because I had it in red, and he looked a little bit like Santa Claus. And nope. He's not the impaler. He gets other people to impale things. I guarantee you Dracula had never impaled somebody directly. He did somebody else have to do the bidding for him. Um, that wasn't the camo black. Where is the SS camo black? Ah, oh, it's a boy over here. I think it may be too dark. Let's just, let's go with it. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Let me look at one more picture. Let's move this a little bit. Let's open up this and come on. Pretty dark. It's pretty dark. We're gonna go with this, and the feathers will be white. Let's go with this. Let's do it. Do it now. With any luck, we can start painting the victims tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. I have a feeling it's gonna take a while. I don't wanna rush them. I don't wanna be like, oh, just dry brush the bone guys. I'm not going to just dry brush figures when I've spent this much time doing all the other stuff. And I really don't want to play this army without, without, the, um, without the camp. Now, I would play the Moldavians without the camp, but I can't use the Dracula figure without the impaled figures. I mean, that's just not cool. So let's paint his hat. Let's not mess up his face. And I've skipped his sash. I've put that off because I don't know what's going to look good. So let's get all the things out of the way that we have constants as far as what they're going to look like. Okay, we know what color his hat is going to be and we're not going to change that no matter what color his sash is so you might as well go ahead and paint it it'll help you make a decision what color the sash is going to be which you do have some flexibility on and i'm actually going to do something weird and I'm going to actually lighten us up with yellow. I don't want his hat to be too washed out looking.
Now the flag is going to be predominantly black. So we want a flagpole that's relatively light to make it pop and look correct. Because the whole objective is let's do it right the first time. Let's not have to fix everything. No point in fixing something when I could be painting something new. And let's just use pure white for the last bit. Did I ever get into high? I didn't. The rules, are, the the geometry of the rules are different, and that's the problem I have with the rules is the geometry. And I'm not really into fantasy, you know. I I'll probably never read a fantasy book. So, um, right. I think this dark sand would be just fine. And I don't care that it looks a little gray, so I'm fine using black as the darkener in it. Actually, may have gotten the figures in the mail yesterday. I didn't. I was back late, and I didn't check the mail on the way in. I honestly forgot about it because when I left, they, had, they hadn't come in yet. So we'll check that today. Wouldn't have. It wouldn't affect the stuff that I'm painting now, anyways. So, geez, it's almost ten. Well, we got to stop at ten for sure. That's just. Too long. As a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and stop after we're done with painting this this uh, flagpole. That'll leave the sash, the back part of the shields, the strappings of the horse, the scabbard for the sheet for the uh, for his uh, saber, and the horse tail and stuff. And then this guy will be done. We got one guy left, and we can spray these guys and mount them, and then the army tactically is complete at the min and a minimalist level. At a minimalist level. And we'll be back on tomorrow morning. Maybe we'll be back on later today. We'll see. We'll have to see how it plays out. Want to upload that video? Well, the upload is uploaded. I want to make sure that YouTube has finished processing it in HD. I could have listed it. But then you guys go and watch it in 360. And 360 is not worth watching it in. So that's a series of battles that we did last night. Four battles and a couple different ways to play the game and we hadn't used them all at once. So you might be in for a treat. Battles go a lot quicker if it's just Mitch and I playing. A lot quicker. 
because I think the whole video with four battles is not even three hours. The shorter the video for me, the less processing time all of it takes, so I'm up for a, a short video. Shorter video. All right, we may highlight a little bit more, but that's what we're going to call it. Give my back a rest. Not that it's really hurting that bad, but okay. Well, as always, thanks for stopping by, folks, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. Happy Saturday, and um, get some paint and go. And be on the lookout for that uh, video that's going to be posting, um, I'd say, in the next hour, assuming it's done being processed. It'll be announced on this channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe.